Hi, it's Warren Hewitt here. Hope you're doing marvellously well. Um, today I'd like to talk about basic recording guitar production techniques. So not just getting the guitar tone, but just how to use guitars, you know, in an effective way to maybe make the choruses bigger, um, and also, you know, different techniques that I use to sort of separate guitars. So please uh, subscribe, go to the email list and uh, producelikeapro.com. That's uh, down below, and you can get a lot, a lot of bunch of uh, free goodies. Um, you can also see our exclusive videos from recording piano and drums, etc. And we continually add free gifts, etc. To that, we're going to do drum samples, etc. On there, there's also um, a drum session by um, Greg D'Angelo that you can edit, and you can go to our Beat Detective one and see how we edited the drums on that. There's lots of fun stuff, and we're continually adding to it. So please subscribe to ProduceLikeAPro.com. Okay, let's get started. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a pair of heavy rhythm guitars in a chorus to make the chorus huge and also to make the guitars wide. It's not just about the mixing, but I'm actually going to show you a couple of subtle techniques that I use for recording guitars so they sound big and wide. Okay, so let's get started. Okay, great. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay in some simple rakes on this chorus. Um, just to lift the chorus a little bit, there's already a heavy guitar in drop D actually playing the chord sequence, sort of chugging through in a kind of grungy way. But now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put a pair of rakes just for a lift. Now, um, let's listen to the track so you can hear what it is. There's already a couple of guitar parts in there. You can hear the grungy kind of rhythm that's chunking through with the drop D. Um, and there's also like a high line that I put in. Um, so this is really just going to reinforce the grungier guitar to give it a little bit of definition. Not going to be super loud in there, but the most important thing is I need this to sound wide. Now, not all of us have tons of amps to choose from. Um, so if you're just going to use one amp, there's a little trick that I've used. and um, so th what I do is I'll use one guitar, the same guitar, I'll use the same amp, but to get width and stereo things I do a little tiny little tweak and I'll show you what it is. So here I'm using my Les Paul and personally the reason why I like this for rakes is because it has this ever-tuned system on it. Um, it. Basically what it is is it keeps the guitar perfectly in tune and it keeps the intonation great. So it makes life for doubling guitars really easy because the, the you know, the the uh, tuning will remain constant. But anyway, so here is the part. Now what you can see I've done is I've got uh, an echo tone um, delay pedal here. You can use any delay pedal. I just personally like this one because it has a tone control on it and it, it sounds very analog to me. Um, and I don't want a digital kind of delay that muddies up the strum. Because if you listen to the strum... See, the delays that come after it are warm sounding because I've wound the tone down. And it's so I can have the definition, but it adds to the sustain. The reason for adding to the sustain is I'm moving between chords. And it helps smooth out those chord changes. You know, in the past, when I first started producing, I would actually play each chord independently and then punch in because I didn't want that kind of, you know, you know, where you kind of play a chord and then have to move your hand. But I found now, just put a little bit of delay. The feedback's a little short here, so I'm going to lengthen the feedback. Um, so I'm just turning the feedback up, and you'll hear that that covers, you know, my hand movement. Do you hear that? So a little delay on the rakes is great. Now the second thing I do is I use a chorus. Now I'm, I'm blessed here because I have this Carl Martin chorus that has two different chorus settings. But you don't have to have a chorus that has two different chorus settings. You could just have one chorus and then change it. So what I do is I use the depth pretty low. 
um, it's not super high here you can see the depth is down there but I changed the speed so one the speed is super fast and one the one is fast and one is really fast I should say so let's go for the first the first one here I'm going to turn it on you can hear it bring the depth down a little bit So let's try, let's try doing, um, let's try doing one side of this uh, stereo guitar part. Cool, so that's our first track. Um, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to the other setting with a faster speed and a different depth setting to get some real width. We'll take the old one, pan it left, create a new track, pan it right, and I'll double what I just did and that will give us some width. And now I'm gonna click on the other side and it's gonna go to the even faster speed. Great, so I left the delay the same both times. You could change the delay up, but that isn't as big a deal to me as using that chorus with slightly different uh, rates and depths. And it, all it's doing is slightly detuning the guitar. But if we solo those two panned hard left and hard right, you can see how wide they feel. Thanks ever so much for watching. If you have any questions about guitar production, please leave them in the comments below. I'd love to answer them. I love, I love this discussion that we have about uh, recording. I learn a lot as well. You guys give me different tips and uh, it's, it's great to share them. Um, please go to producelikeapro.com and sign up and on the email list and you'll get free stuff. You'll also get um, access to our Vimeos where you can see um, drum recording techniques, you can also download drum files recorded by Greg D'Angelo to edit, you can see the piano recording one, and there's lots of fun things to do. Um, and subscribe! Thank you ever so much for watching, and I, I really appreciate it. Have a marvellous time recording.